Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Apollo. Uh, I'm about to play some Kerbal Space Program, and it's my first time ever doing any kind of live recording, so um, you'll have to bear with me. My microphone is a POS $5 cheapy from Fry's, and I just finally got my headset to work, so hearing myself is uh, kind of funky. I've been playing around with it, and um, it's pretty damn fun, actually. I love it. Uh, who knew I would enjoy hearing the sound of my own voice now than I was when I was hearing this come out of the speakers? So, um, I love this game. I've been playing it for well over 300 hours, even though I'm a noob. Um, there's so much to learn. I've you know, made it to the moon, I've made moon landings, uh, I used to do refueling, um, but one thing that was always elusive to me was doing orbital um, rendezvous, and uh, I wanted to keep trying my hand on it. So, for my very first episode, um, for my very first recording ever, we're going to launch the core of a space station, about 150 kilometers um, above the surface of Kerbin. Um, there is no editing. I do not have editing software. I do not have any good quality audio software. So um, in the true spirit of the Kerbals, um, it's probably going to be a disaster. So, uh, without further ado, I am eating up precious space and time. Let's get right to it and go into the vehicle vehicle assembly. Um, load up our craft file here. I have already made the rocket. If you were on Facebook, um, you would have already seen the core, which has been slightly modified just a little bit. Um, Corbin Station Core. Oh, pow. Here we go. So this is the rocket. Um, I have my station core in there. I don't want to really show you that right now. Um, you'll see it when we get up there. It is a five-stage rocket. I overcomplicated the crap out of it just because um, this is Kerbal Space Program. This is what we do. We make it stupidly hard um, for no apparent reason. So. Uh, to the meat and potatoes of it, I don't know if any of you know anything about Kerbal Space or how space works or um, any of the dynamics or mechanics. I'll go over some of the stuff briefly because nobody wants to hear technical jargon. jargon. Um, I promised myself I would not swear here, uh, but I think it might be inevitable just because I am an asshat like that. So here we go. Let's get this out on the launch pad. Boop. Um, working with really remember the first one, but I just finally got my Kerbal flight engineer installed, and it works on 1.2. So um, there's the rocket in all of its glory. Um, we're going to full throttle SAS, uh, which is stability control, and RCS for RCS thrust. Give me a help of maneuvering a little bit. So what we're going to do is launch off the pad, go at the 90, um, toward the 90, and um, yeah, let's see how it goes. Um, this is the nav ball, if you've never seen one before. Um, the nav ball rotates around this golden marker right here. Um, I had a brain fart there for a second. I had to pull up my paper. My level indicator. The level indicator, this golden little bobble right here, that never moves. The ball moves around it. So once I get up there, um, you'll see two little yellowish markers, which are the prograde and retrograde. They're always on opposite ends of the ball. Same thing with everything else that comes out on this ball as far as radio in, radio out, target prograde, blah, 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 blah. Not like you'll probably know what the hell that is, but I'll explain it as we go. So, um, let's get this pig in the air. Five, four, three, two, one, blast off. I'm 
going to go about 2,000 meters and then make a break for the 90. I have to pay attention here because in a couple of little trial runs, um, my first uh, set of boosters here, which are actually liquid fuel, not actual fuel, um, they're set up in a flower pattern. So you'll see here, uh, now there goes one set. Okay, here we go. Rolling toward the 90. Um, I'm going to go to about, let's see here, 10, 15-ish, and hit the prograde button. It's going to wobble a little bit here. And prograde. There. And it should stick. Boop, just like that. Uh, keep an eye on my liquid fuel down here on the left. Running it out. About to move. There it goes. Perfect. So what will happen is um, I'll keep going along the prograde um, and it's going to rotate uh, as gravity slowly pulls down my rocket toward um, the planet, which in a sense is a gravity turn. Well, this is a controlled gravity turn. Now we're looking at Apollo's height, which is our peak height. Uh, we're currently, if we stop our engines at 30,000, but we're climbing. So um, once we run out of fuel here, and uh, in, my, in my test runs, this uh, did not go as smoothly as um, it is right now. And I'm at 46,000, uh, with still a ton of fuel left. Um, but like I said, we're going to 150. So once this burns out, my next stage, uh, stage two, I'll only burn for a short amount of time. And coming up right here and flame out. There it goes. There we go. Okay, I'm only going to go up a little bit here. 90, 100. See here? I have a lot of height. So we're 100,000 meters at our peak. And now we're going to go to the map. Here is Kerbin in all its fantastic glory. Isn't that beautiful? Now let me set my maneuver node here and I'll show you the rest. You always want to go at the peak of your Appalachian right there. Add maneuver. And this is prograde. This is retrograde, so prograde, we're going to pull out and get our circular orbit, 162, 100, drag it back. I don't want to go up that high. 100, 93, a little bit more. 97, 102, I think we can look at that. 97, 102. Yeah, all right, we'll, we'll leave it there. So we can pull the nav ball up. I can fully control my ship from right here. And again, I apologize for the reverb. This uh, this microphone really does suck. So if you can look at the nav ball, this is my maneuver marker. So whenever you plan out a maneuver, it's going to throw this little, it's the only single spot. Everything else has two, like the prograde will have the retrograde on the opposite side. Come on, baby. Get over there. Now you can see my burn is 52 seconds. Move, 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 move. Oh, because I'm set on program. There we go. Stability assist. No wonder why I kept moving. All right. So, so we're set up. Fuel's here. We're going to burn here in just a second because you always divide this in half. So it'll be 26 seconds. So T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, burn. We're going to watch the meters per second drop, and um, that will achieve target velocity and give us our orbit. Um, the reason why you split it in half is because um, if I was to burn right at my apolapse height, I'm already falling back to the planet. And falling back to the planet is no bueno. You want to you wanna balance. So down to 500, 400. And in the threes, we'll get close here. Two, one, and seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Just kill it. Okay, we're going to get about 13. And we're sitting at 105 and 100. And ladies and gentlemen, we are in orbit just like that. Let's go back to the, uh, the ship, so to speak. Um, and uh, let's do a little flashbang here. And uh, peekaboo, I see you. <sighs> so.
some of that go straight down, the rest come up, but that will eventually fall back into curve and leaving no waste, which is fantastic. Um, orbital views, uh, we have camera free, orbital, chase, and locked. So, for the sake of argument, we'll go ahead and leave it in orbital. See the nice curve of the planet here and the sun. Very simple, kind of, if you pretty much know what you're doing. Um, we're going to roll around really fast because our apolapse is higher and our periapse is 100. So um, here we can actually, if we quickly pop a maneuver node, we can jump up. And, and really, I don't need... All I really need is my prograde line right here. You can see how... It's going to be a little off-center because I want to keep it on my 90. But there's really no bird time. T minus 17, 16. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring this, this apolapse out to about 150. And it's going to go fast. So um, let's go ahead and pop that now because I'm pretty sure it's going to be a couple of seconds here. 38. 151. Okay. I, and I'll fine-tune this after this video so that way we're just about 100... 150 perfect. When we get around to the other side, we're going to do the same thing and bring our periapsal on 150, and that's our damn near perfect circular orbit. And um, then I can drop this pig, and uh, we can leave the core of the station while I bring the launcher in a burn up trajectory back into curve and leaving no waste. So let's set up our maneuver now really fast. We're going to give it a little bump here. We can actually watch it. It would be probably better. 169, 167, 160. Whoops. Alright, what do we got? 147. Just back here. 148. Ah, you booty. Put it in. So touchy. 186. 186. 175. And screw it. 152. That's pretty darn close. Go a little lower. There we go. 151. 151. See that? If I do this burn perfect, we'll be at 151. That's not bad. Maybe later I'll uh, fix it. So let's time warp. We can go four times since we're way out there. So yeah, this is stupid fun. Like I have no idea why I've never done videos before. Um, mostly fear. Um, sounding like an idiot. And uh, now that I'm 38 years old, I really don't give a shit anymore. I just, I just want to have fun and relax. So, all right, let's, let's pitch, pitch around to the the maneuver node here. Our maneuver gonna go right here. Steady as she goes, Jim. Bump, 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 and just like that. Look, Look at the, the burn time. time. One second. Right, so, so we're going to have to make this nice and easy and slow. One minute, 48 seconds, we can shave that down a little bit more. Wow. One minute, but shoot. There we go. Uh, 50, 40, 30, 20. We'll stop at the 20. Roll it down. 19, 18. Okay. Keep an eye on it here. If I burn too early, it's going to ruin my apoplex here, so just got to be careful. 38 meters a second is very small. And cut it. Look at that, 0.6, not bad. So we ended up actually at, let's kill this moon out here, 1513, 158. That's pretty, that's pretty darn circular, really. 
and I think we'll leave it like that. Let's go ahead and uh, we'll do our separate. Oh, there's the Mon. Woohoo! Altitude 11 million meters. Velocity is running at 542.4 meters a second. So um, we're gonna go there. As soon as I set up a communications network. Now, believe it or not, now that we have 1.2, we do have comms. Um, I could take them off. I really don't want to. This is first top. This is the path. Um, this is vessel line. Uh, and the full network here. So you can see everybody communicating. But um, to get out here... Uh, we'll need something a little stronger. Do I need geosynchronous satellites to get to the moon? Hell no. This is, excuse me, this is a sandbox. I, I have everything unlocked. There's really no need. But um, why not, right? Why not? So since we're in geosync, uh, geosync, since we're in a nice circular orbit, I'll pull you out really fast. As you can see, uh, this is Kerbin. There's the moon. Our next closest neighbor is Minimus. I have personally never been to Minimus. And uh, hopefully we can make it there together. Um, after that, we're going to roll out. And you'll see the inner circle. You see all these little question marks, unknown objects. Those are little asteroids and things we could actually um, deorbit, put them around curve, and perhaps crash into the curve. Who knows? Um, there's Eve, our inner neighbor. Never been to Eve, of course. Never been to any of these. There's um, Moho. Uh, outer further on the inner is Duna, which is basically the equivalent of Mars. Um, and then we have the outer planets of Drez, Jewel, and down here in the bottom, Elu. Ever elusive Elu. You always want to catch Elu when it's on and it hits it on its uh, inner loop. That is just a hell of a distance. Look at that. 113 billion meters. Good God. All right. Back to home. Let's go ahead and go back to the ship. And we're going to pop her loose on our final. And you see I still have a little bit of fuel, which is intentional. So... Let's break away here. Give it a little bit of a burn. I did put engines on this. Give us some getaway speed here. There we go. And that uh, boy is getting dark. Maybe some lights. Let there be lights. Yes, in all its glory, the station core um, is fully powered. As you can see up in the top, the electrical charge is doing a little dance jig. I have four generators on here, right here, and um, which is providing power, but that will not be enough once we get the station built up. And then eventually we're going to transplant the station to the moon, because the moon is going to be our hopping point. Um, I am running out of time. So with this, I'm going to save it. We're going to go back to the, tra the station and go to the tracking center and get a hold of the now satellite that's... Uh, in conjunction with me here. So, let's escape here and we're going to go to the tracking station. See? Isn't this fun, right? Lies. Okay, here's the core. Now, let's see here. This is the satellite, and that is the station, and we're going to fly it because. I put a core on here. Oh, yes, I did. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. See? There is always something. But I do have power. Hmm. I have no function whatsoever. Why? There we go. Good God. Hibernation off. We can now move. Okay. What we do not have, however, which in my infinite wisdom forgot, is uh, RCS. So, 
with the direction we're facing. Hmm. Gonna get rotation with the bar. Ha ha ha! Okay, okay so, so we're gonna, gonna spin around to retrograde. There's always a way. There's always a way! <laughs> retrograde. Coming up. Stop. 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 See? No. I did not plan for everything, otherwise I had, like, RCS on here, so... Again, true Kerbal spirit, anything can happen. Um, as you can see, the meters per second are slowing down, which means we are deorbiting. If we go ahead and look at our periaps, it's going down quick. We'll give a short burst, and that's it. This will burn up in re-entry and disintegrate, nothing will survive, and we will have no debris floating around in space for the next time we launch. Um, we need to do two launches uh, for power, and we need to put up a science lab, and um, more fuel, and a fat rocket engine to transplant us to the moon. So, Thank you for sticking around. I hope you thought it was uh, slightly enjoyable. It was sure as hell fun for me. Uh, again, um, if you're not following, uh, check out Apollo XRP on Facebook. Um, I'll be throwing up some screenshots. And uh, again, this is just for fun. I am a total freaking new when it comes to this game. I know some things. Scott Manley, uh, thank you very much for everything. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, Gentlemen, um, have a great evening. It's been real. Late.